Thorny ways leads to 
of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let a rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven
Mayong gabi sa tanan. Good evening, everyone, and good morning also to those who are joining us from the other side of the globe. Our greetings also to our prayer warriors who are regularly praying with us nightly in our daily prayer meditation. Welcome to our combined midweek prayer service and daily prayer meditation tonight here at Silliman University Church, broadcasting through FB Live Streaming and through YouTube channel of Silliman University Church. We also welcome those who have joined us for the first time in this worship service. May you will be blessed tonight as we also invite you to join us in our nightly prayer meditation and other online ministries of Silliman University Church. We continue to observe our month-long emphasis on stewardship, and tonight I will be reflecting on this theme, giving emphasis on our roles as God's stewards. With me tonight is the Reverend Vela de Rosas as liturgist and minister. Our endless thanks to our pianist, Ms. Alan Diadem Kesed Hovita, and to our technical team, the J2 Mad Band members, for assisting us and making all our online ministries and activities possible. Once again, thank you so much to all of you. We extend our profound thanks to everyone, church members, and our online worshipers who continue to send your, your offerings of pledges, tithes, and donations. Thank you for sharing your blessings to the church through your offerings. These have really enabled the church to sustain and continue its ministries, especially in this time of pandemic. For those who want to give your offerings, you can deposit it through our bank accounts, or you can use the online transfer through Instapay or Pesonet. Just follow the instructions now being flashed on the screen together with our bank account numbers with the church contact numbers. We are inviting everyone to continue praying with us nightly through our daily prayer meditation. Please join us every 6 o'clock in the evening except Wednesdays and Sundays to give way to our midweek and youth worship respectively. Our limited in-person worship service on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. continues. And for those who are planning to worship with us physically here at the church, please be reminded that we need to pre-register. Please be guided. We are also reminding everyone for our Thanksgiving Sunday on November 28th that we are soliciting family pictures to be included in the video that we will create as part of our expression of gratitude to God for the gift of family. Please send us your cherished family pictures not later than November 26 at 5 p.m. to give ample time to our technical team for the video editing. Thank you so much. Again, please be guided. For the rest of our announcements, please browse our parish news uploaded on our FB page. Please like our FB page, Silliman University Church, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for you to be notified on our different online activities. Thank you so much once again. Good evening. God bless us all. Let us now continue worshiping God together. Come into this time of worship by the new and living way in Christ Jesus. We come with true hearts in full assurance of faith. Come with joyful expectation. We gather in full confidence of the gospel's promise. Let us praise God together and open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit. 
that we may encourage and support each other to love our neighbors as ourselves and to be God's instruments of grace. For those who are able, please rise for the hymn of praise. Let us pray together. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, we gather together in your name. We come as living sacrifices to offer you our worship and thanksgiving, our praise and our prayers. Come among us, living Lord. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, transform our hearts and minds so that we may recognize your presence, hear your voice, know your will, and walk in your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
You may now be seated. Let us now come to the act of confession. Dear friends, the scriptures urge us to acknowledge our sins and not to conceal them in the presence of God, but to confess them with a penitent and obedient heart so that we may be forgiven through his boundless goodness and mercy. Therefore, let us draw near to the throne of our gracious God and confess our sins through silent prayer. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, Jesus knows our every weakness and loves us still. Awaken to the promise of Christ's amazing grace. Believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Let us unite our hearts and spirits in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace, together we turn to you in prayer, for it is you who unites us. Bring stillness to our hearts, empty our minds of other things, and direct our thoughts to those who specially need our prayers. Loving God, you alone are the source of every good gift. And as we celebrate Stewardship Month, we praise you for all of the gifts you have given to us. We thank you for your generosity. Everything we have and all that we are comes from you. Please help us to be grateful and responsible as we commit ourselves to be good stewards. Help us, O oh Lord, to be grateful accountable, generous, and willing to give back. Help us to make stewardship our way of living. Open our hearts to love and see that all people are made in your image and care for your creation and affirm that life is wonderful. Almighty God, help us to follow you and by your spirit, let us transform word into action and may our worship 
drives us into a deepening fellowship with you and with our brothers and sisters in faith. We especially pray tonight for those who feel forgotten, lonely, and defined by everyone. Help us draw our brothers and sisters out from despair. Let them know of your love and your desire to give us abundant and everlasting life. Keep us in your steadfast faith and love, O God, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Gather us, O Lord, as we lift to you the special needs of your people. We pray for those who have no home, no land, no food, no work, no medicine, no peace. Please bring healing to our brothers and sisters who are weak and sick. May your healing power be with them in this time of crisis. Let your healing love be known this day by all who suffer ailment of the body, distress of mind, and agony of spirit. Lord God, we even pray for the leaders of our country. Give our leaders the strength and wisdom, the love to lead this nation with justice and compassion. May our leaders be trustworthy enough to make wise decisions for the well-being of your people. Lord God, you have heard the concern of our hearts. Speak to us, Lord, for your children are listening. Hear the silent prayers of your people. These are all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. For those who are able, please rise as we honor the reading of the Holy Scripture. Our first reading for tonight is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And it says, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. The second reading is found in the book of Psalm, chapter 24. And it says, The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. You may now be seated. Good evening once again. We continue to observe Stewardship Month today, and tonight I would like to dwell on the idea that everything, practically everything in this world, is God's. And this led me to review our basic understanding of stewardship. We commonly hear the word steward on plane or a ship as it describes such position serving the passengers. However, in the Bible, when we are told to be steward, it commonly refers to manager. We know what a manager does. A manager is someone who is given the responsibility to take care of something on behalf of someone else and is given the authority but works for the owner. Now this gives us the idea that biblically, stewards are God's managers and good stewards are always mindful that he or she works for God, conscious that God is the owner. As the psalmist puts it in verse 1 of tonight's passage, the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. This is a declaration that God owns it all. Our second text in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, reveals God's mandate to human beings, created in his own image. And through this text, I believe our call for stewardship begins. God bestowed to human beings the responsibility to manage his creation. As God's managers, we are expected to be good stewards, to take care of the gift God has given us, we have become stewards of the things of earth, such as money, tangible things, and even people. I know that this understanding is not new to us. We knew this already, but I believe that we need to be reminded of this. Because what is happening around us today is a manifestation of our forgetfulness. We are a forgetful people a people that easily forgets who we are and our responsibilities before God. An observance of Stewardship Month in the church gives us the time to be reminded of these things. As I look around us, I can sense that there are at least three things that need to be done of our being God's stewards. These are first, to revisit our understanding as God's stewards. Second, to reclaim the role that God has entrusted us. And third, to refocus our attention to God. Now let's go to the first. That there is a need for us to revisit our understanding as God's stewards. Why? Because we have shifted our concept from knowing that we do not own anything from this world to claiming ownership on what this world has. We need to rethink and bring back our consciousness to the truth that everything in this world belongs to God. We have claimed self-entitlement of this world, and it appears to us that everything in this planet is claimed to be owned by certain individuals or groups or a corporation. The land, the seas, the animals, and even people and this mindset has given us the idea to do everything over these things, thinking that we have all the right to do anything we want, even to the point of exploiting and abusing whatever there is in this world. The world is now suffering from climate change. Sea levels are rising because of the warming oceans and because of the melting land ice. And the evidence clearly points to climate changes as being primarily due to human activities. Plans for reclamation projects are at hand, not only here in the city, but practically in the different places in the country or even to some other countries. Now, why are we doing this? Because humans think that we are the rightful owner of these things, not even being mindful of its effect. 
And because we own these things, we think we have the right to do anything we want, even to the point of devastating God's wonderful creation. Revisiting our understanding to stewardship is getting back to the basics of what our faith has taught us, that God is the creator, that God is the source of everything there is, which is very clear in our text tonight. And mind you, this refers not only to the things of this world, not only to God's created order, but also to us, to other people. God is the owner even of our own life, our body, mind, and spirit. We have forgotten that like Job, we came to this world naked. Yes, everything in this world is God's. We do not own anything, not even our own life, our own body. And this is affirmed by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians saying, Do you not know that your body is the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. God does not only own the world and its wealth, but he owns us as well. We must hold on to this understanding, recognizing that all that we are and all that we have come from God. And this is Christian stewardship, acknowledging God as the owner of all things. To simply put it, God is the owner, we are the manager. Everything we have today comes from God. It is His. We own nothing. In Psalm chapter 81, verse 11, David said that the world and everything in it belongs to God. We are not the owner of the things in our life. As a steward, we are merely the manager. For if we believe that we are the owner, then we are constantly going to be in conflict with God over what we do with things, with the things that we have. But when we understand that the Lord is the owner and we are only the manager, the conflict disappears and freedom overtakes our life. And because we acknowledge God to be the owner and we humans are managers, then we become conscious of our roles and responsibilities of such task. Second, there is a need to reclaim the role that God has entrusted to us. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it is clear how God commanded and entrusted human beings over his creation, being created in God's image. I would like to believe that God wishes us human beings to be his collaborators in the work of creation, redemption, and sanctification of the world, thus bestowing us the roles to take care, to cultivate, to nurture, and to maintain whatever he has created. And this is a divine responsibility that is given to us by God. The Apostle Paul calls us to be ambassadors of Christ. Our work in God's image begins with faithfully representing God, but domineering over all creation, including fellow human beings, is a distortion of God's purpose. We are to mirror God. Our work is meant to serve God's purpose more than our own, which prevents us from domineering all that God has put under our control. But you see, instead of taking care and being responsible of what God has entrusted to us, we exercise royal dominion over the earth. Instead of upkeeping God's creation, human beings exploited and abused it. We have participated in the devastation of God's creation instead of tilling and preserving its beauty and bounty. Our Christian faith calls us to care about God's world and to love and protect God's amazing creation. Yet, it can sometimes be a challenge to know where to start or the next right step to take. Reclaiming our role as towards is to take action and participate in the redemption of God's created order, even if it simply means signing up for any advocacy call or a simple, as simple as 
cleaning our own backyard or participate in reducing our waste or recycling that is reusing instead of disposing. It means taking our own action at home. Another depressing part of this reality is the fact that exploitation happens also to humans. Those who consider themselves above over everyone else exploit, oppress, use, and abuse their fellow human beings. And this is happening around us. We exercise power and authority over those whom we think are lower than us. Many of us took advantage of the less privileged, extracting the resources even out of their scarcity. And even in this time of pandemic, where many are suffering financially due to unemployment and joblessness, many among us can still afford to take advantage of them. Our time now is plagued with violence, exploitation, and corruption. Yes, these practices have stained our role as God's trustees. Many among our government leaders can still afford to corrupt government funds by diverting budget allocations to other use. In fact, according to Jonathan Cushing, who leads on global health at anti-corruption and non-profit transparency international, states, and I quote, we have seen repeated cases of corruption, and that is the second pandemic in many ways. I believe that one of our roles as God's stewards is to take care of each other. As God's stewards, we have the responsibility of caring for all those who are in need, especially the last, the least, and the lost. It is our responsibility to share with those in need and make sure that basic human needs are met. As Christ followers and as a church, we need to reclaim our role to be responsible of making sure people are treated fairly and justly. Isn't this what Jesus Christ taught us, that we are to minister one another? The word of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, is very clear, saying, Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. To reclaim our role of what God has entrusted to us in caring for each other is to translate our faith in Christ. For caring for those in need is evidence of a faith that changes lives. Caring for each other could also mean to lead, to guide, and to inspire others into actions or get involved in making plans in the redemption of God's world. And when we do something, incredible will happen. We'll encounter a living God working through us to usher in his kingdom of love and justice on earth, to end exploitation, to restore lives, and to empower communities need our total participation. Finally, there is also a need for us to refocus our attention to God. In our stewardship calls, oftentimes, God is not visible. Our stewardship initiatives should remain focused on God. We seem to neglect God's work in what we do. Let us remember that during the Old Testament times, God's people came to realize that God is always their answer whenever they were confronted with great challenges. While the pandemic has certainly changed a lot of things in our day-to-day -day lives, it has not changed this reality. Thankfully, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Psalm 24, which also describes humans entering in God's space and God entering in us. It is about the advent of human beings into the presence of God and the mutual advent of God into the presence of those who seek the face of God. This ushers us to seek God and to refocus our attention to him for us to be faithful in our stewardship calling. It is a known fact 
that the world's devastation and brokenness has kept us preoccupied, rendering us unaware and oblivious to another. We have concent concentrated too much of the world's destruction, pain, suffering, and miseries, thus keeping us from seeing God and acknowledging His presence in us, thinking that we are doing alone in our undertaking and struggles. In all that we do and in our stewardship, we should refocus our attention to God, letting God be a part of our undertaking. And we should always be grounded in our relationship to God. In our need to reclaim the role entrusted to us by God, we also need to refocus our attention to God, seeking God in everything that we do. We have moved God behind us or even in the periphery of our attention. We have focused too much of the destruction of this world, forgetting God's original intention for us. These devastations and suffering could be God's instruments for us to know his presence, to feel that he is actively working in our midst. But sometimes we miss God's point as our eyes are fixed on the challenges that confront us without realizing and acknowledging God's work. We fail to see God's hand carrying us through because we are too focused on our own selves, thinking that we are able to do it in our own way. We always forget that God allows things to happen to reveal his power and magnify his own name and that our very purpose is to glorify him. We have been overwhelmed by the responsibilities of this world, thus taking our focus off of God. Now we must refocus our lives on God and let everything else follow. Yes, the pandemic has changed much of the world we once knew. Instead of waiting for our world to come back, let us focus on the world that is here today. Despite its challenges, it is still a pretty awesome place. In this world, we still serve a mighty God that can do amazing things. In this world, we still have the promise of hope. In this world, we still have the light that no pandemic can ever extinguish, the light of Jesus Christ. Let us utilize our stewardship season as a time where we remind ourselves of these potent realities. Let us stop doing things on our own way. Let God take his part. We human beings have the tendency of making things happen in our own way, thinking that we can do it. But we see God wants to help us, not just in the big things, but even in the smallest details of our everyday life. But God will only be involved in as much of our life as we allow him. What we need is to refocus our attention to God and let him do his way. In all our ways, not some of our ways, not just the big things. We'll just have to acknowledge God's ways. And one way of doing it is simply asking for his help. The simple acknowledgement that we accord to God allows the creator of the universe to direct our steps. God will help us find what we may not have found. He will put us the right place at the right time. This is refocusing our attention to God and letting him do his way for us. Letting everything in our life pass through the hands of God, our struggles, our pain and tragedy, then our blessings and everything in, everything in between passes through his hand as well. You see, if we refocus our attention to God, we can also refocus our attention no longer to the big things that we think can shake the world. Let us remember that God is mindful of the ordinary and minor things of our life. Let me end this reflection through this unknown story that I have read. An elderly master carpenter was ready to retire. He told his employer of his plans to leave the house building business and live a more leisurely life with his wife enjoying his extended family. He would miss the paycheck, but he needed to retire. They could get by. 
The contractor was sorry to see his good worker go and asked if he could build just one more house as a personal favor. The carpenter said, yes, but in time it was easy to see that his heart was not in his work. He resorted to shoddy workmanship and used infer inferior materials. It was an unfortunate way to end his career. When the carpenter finished his work and the builder came to inspect the house, the contractor handed the front door key to the carpenter. This is your house, he said, my gift to you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, stewardship is life's call. How we respond to this call is God's gift to us. As to the kind of gift that we want to receive from God depends on how we work on it. Tonight, we are reminded on the need for us to revisit, reclaim, and refocus on the gift of stewardship God has given us. May we be found faithful in building up this gift. God bless us all. Amen. God has made us stewards of the rich resources that were given in creation and are given anew each day. On this day, we make our offerings knowing that all that we have has come from God, who will continue to provide. Let us put our hearts into our offering as signs of our trust and faithfulness. Let us pray. May these gifts indicate our gratitude for our many blessings. May the spiritual nourishment we receive today strengthen us for continued service. Amen. Let us now come to the lighting of the candle of hope. Tonight, we praise and thank the Lord for reminding us that we have our hope in God. As the psalmist says, that our help is in the name of the Lord our God, the maker of heaven and earth, who comes to our aid in times of need, who gives us the courage to do what we know is right, who invites us to turn away from the influences of the world around us. 
If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have been swallowed up in this life. Let us now rest in the promise of God. Let us call upon God, creator and rescuer, for God is in our side. As we light this candle of hope, may this represent our strong faith and love to the Lord who gives us hope. Amen. Let us pray. Indeed, O Lord, all earth, all creatures, everything is yours. Creator God, give us your spirit to work together to restore your creation and to hand on a safe environment to our children and the next generation. Let our care for your creation be our act of worship and obedience to you. For your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are grateful to you, O Lord, for this time of virtual worship and be able to experience your holy presence and express our thanksgiving through our songs, prayers, and even the meditation of our hearts. We thank you for inspiring our hearts and to remember your great works through the lives of our community and the creation. Thank you for reminding us to open our eyes that we may see the deepest needs of your people and the creation. To move our hands that we may feed the hungry. Touch our heart, O oh God, that it may bring warm to the despairing. Teach us the generosity that welcomes strangers, clothe the naked, give care, and strengthens the sick. Help us, O oh God, as we unite ourselves to do the task you have entrusted to us. O oh Lord, we acknowledge that you are the healer of all our sickness. We bring to you, Lord, our bodies, minds, and spirits, hurting and broken. We offer prayers for your people, for those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those who need healing, 
for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities, for those who are grieving, and for those whose needs are known to you alone. Hear the prayers of your people, dear God, even the unspoken need. All this we pray in Jesus' name. And now, people of God, go now and embrace the hope to which God has called you. Go in peace to enjoy and employ your gift of faith. Our help is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. So go from here with joy and confidence to love and serve the Lord. For the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with you now and forever. Amen.
down our idols. So give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let's not live our souls to another. Give us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let's not live our souls to another. bend our knees Oh Spirit come make us humble We turn our eyes from evil things Oh Lord we cast down our idols So give us clean hands Give us pure hearts Let us not live our souls to another Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not bend our souls to another. And God has been a generation that seeks, that seeks your face, oh God of Jacob. And God has been a generation that seeks. This is your face, O oh God of Jacob. You're my God, you're my God. Oh. Oh. Generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob, and God let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob, and God let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, O Oh,